Thank you. Hi, I'm Kishan, Kishan Shinoy. I'm uh, with a small company called Quiltsar, based in San Jose. And today's topic is phase noise. So what is phase noise? Firstly, why is phase noise a big deal? Let me tell you, at least give you some examples of why it is a big deal. When we think of phase noise in a signal, we have the notion of the signal being a carrier. And a carrier is usually a sine wave, a sinusoidal signal like a cosine omega naught t. So it's a sine wave with amplitude a and a frequency in radians of omega naught. Now that's a pure sine wave, but we almost never have one. So what we normally have is something which has phase noise involved, and that shows up as a variation on the phase. Usually, if all the, if this all is right in the world, phi of t is a phase noise component. It's going to be small. So if it is small, we, what we can do is see what happens with a cosine omega naught t plus phi of t is a cosine of omega naught t cosine phi of t minus a sine omega naught t sine phi of t. Now, it's been a long time since I did, dealt with uh, these trigonometric identities, so someone will say there should be a minus sign or a plus sign. So don't worry about that too much. The key is that you have now both a cosine and a sine of omega naught t, which is modulated by some quantity. Now, if phi of t is small, we make the usual uh, approximation of sine theta being approximately equal to theta and cosine of theta being approximately equal to 1. So consequently, what we find is that if you have a carrier signal which has a little bit of phase noise, this looks like a cosine of omega naught t, which is the original carrier itself. I made cosine of phi of t approximately equal to 1. And you have a second term which looks like a modulated version of the same carrier. So now what do we have? Instead of having, and I'm going to show it in the Fourier frequency domain, uh, instead of having a single delta function at omega naught, which would cor correspond to the A cosine omega naught t, we have that as before. But in addition, we have some small spurs on either side corresponding to the modulation terms of phi of t. Strictly speaking, you have spurs if phi of t is, is sinusoidal, but this gives you the idea what happens. So in other words, because of phase noise, instead of having a pure carrier, we have a carrier plus sidebands. By, by itself, I guess it's not so bad, but when you use this carrier to modulate something else, you take a, a signal x of t, which is your baseband, and you modulate it with what you think is a cosine of omega 0 t, you're trying to translate x of t to be centered around omega naught, and you get not only that, plus x of t centered around omega naught, plus and minus uh, small spurs on either side. So that's what gives rise to modulation problems, as it were in a noise, and this, the greater is this separation, that the lower down is the sideband, the less is this noise. And that's what, when you look at specifications on phase noise, they talk about how much lower this component is going to be below the carrier, below the main, main lobe, as it were. And uh, the closer this is to the center frequency, it almost gets uh, lost, but it's when it's a little further away from the center frequency that it starts affecting the actual baseband signal itself. So consequently, when you look at a phase noise spec, 
it, it looked like this is at the center frequency, you are allowed a little bit more. The further away you go, the less you are allowed. And generally speaking, this phase noise tolerance curve is in dB, and I can pick some numbers for you. Uh, a good number is around 10 kilohertz away from the carrier. I would like to see a phase noise which is you know, probably like 130 dB down below the carrier. So there's more on phase noise at a later date. Thank you.